The bandwidth for this episode of The Power Factor Show is brought to you by the Firearms Radio Network. Firearmsradio.tv Sponsored by Taylor Freelance, Rainier Ballistics, Hodgson Powders, and JPL Precision. Hey, Power Factor fans. I'm Rick, and we've got a little, not really a product review, but just kind of a little review. Um, in May, I went down to the uh, Portland area for a uh, uh, safety officer class, IDPA safety officer class. And down in Portland is uh, Ted Blocker, which is one of the kind of iconic holster makers, if you're familiar with the early days of competition, IPSC, practical shooting. Um, some of the big names were Bianchi and uh, Gordon Davis, Ted Blocker, uh, there was Ernie Hill, and uh, although Blocker himself uh, no longer runs the business, the Ted Blocker company is still operating down in the Portland area, and now they're heavily into cowboy action holsters, but they still make some of the classic designs from back in the Ted Blocker heyday. As an example, anybody who was a fan of the TV show Miami Vice, knows that Sonny Crockett carried his Bren 10 in a Ted Blocker shoulder holster in the first couple of seasons. Uh, later, that was replaced by a um, Galco design, and that's what turned into the Miami Classic that they sell now. But the first couple of seasons on the show, uh, Crockett uh, wore the Ted Blocker shoulder rig. So while I was passing through Portland to get to the safety officer class, I decided it was actually down in the Eugene area in Albany. Um, I decided I got to stop in there and get a holster. And here's the one that I got. It's called the Thunder, and it's of the uh, metal line. It's got a sheet metal uh, liner in it, so it's nice and uh, solid. Stays open. There's no collapse or whatever when you take the gun out. And it rides pretty high on the belt. This would be perfectly suitable for um, IDPA or USPSA single stack. I mean, it would be suitable for limited too. I mean, I'm seeing more and more people running straight drop conventional style holsters in limited um, and not, uh, you know, some people are just getting away from the um, race style holster. But this is, uh, this is for 1911 and it's formed. Um, there's some fairly uh, detailed forming inside and a uh, tension screw so you can adjust your uh, retention on it. But it's just a cool classic design. <clears throat> I'm kind of a classic design kind of a guy. So I got it in black. And now I'll have to get a belt for it, of course. You can't have a holster without a belt. It comes for a one and three quarter inch belt, which is also becoming more and more rare. But then of course that gives me an excuse to buy a new belt. So if you're looking for a classic uh, competition holster from the days of yore, really well executed, really beautiful uh, stitching and everything. Uh, check out Ted Blocker. Uh, and this model is called the Thunder and it's very cool. Everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Power Factor. So for those of you who remember the old series Magnum PI, you probably remember Thomas Magnum always talking about the little voices in his head. And the little voices in his head usually would get him out of a tough situation when he got into it. So today we're also going to talk about the little voices in your head, but unfortunately, unlike the little voice in, uh, in Thomas Magnum's head where it got him out of the trouble, the little voices in your head usually always get you into trouble and hinder your shooting performance. So for those of you who are not familiar with the voice, actually you probably, probably already are, but it says things like, I hate rabbits, I suck at rabbits, I don't like long crossing distance targets. Uh, don't look at the barrel. That's always a, a favorite one. Um, and also things like, this target is so easy I couldn't possibly miss. Now you're probably wondering, well, wait a minute. Those first uh, examples are negatives and that last one is a positive. How can that be bad? Well, the little voice in your head is kind of like an equal opportunity offender. Um, it, it, you want to... Um, try to minimize it as much as possible. And we're going to talk today about really shutting up the voice or how to shut the voice up. Uh, and also um, kind of the ideas behind uh, mental aspects of shooting. So with respect to your mind, um, a lot of people talk about, a lot of people will talk about right brain or left brain. Your left brain is responsible really for your analytical or thought process 
um, reason, things of that nature. And the left brain likes to take control and also likes to understand or does understand words. So words are your, your left brain's friend, so to speak. In terms of your right brain, your right brain works off feel, it works off emotion, and it also works off of pictures or images. Um, and that's kind of leverages what we talked before about in the past of visualization. And that's really the reason why visualization is so important uh, is that it really feeds the information to your right brain. If you give your, your mind something to visualize, um, it is very good at doing it. And furthermore, your, your mind really can't differentiate between uh, visualization and reality. Um, so we'll get a little bit more into this about how that's important and, and everything. Uh, so this is, we've talked also before about um, the importance of, of becoming a subconscious shooter. And a conscious shooter, what will happen is that you will think, try, try to think yourself through the process of shooting. Uh, and whereas in subconscious, you, you literally hand over the act of shooting to the subconscious and let it figure out. Now, to, to give you an example of this, about how well this does and doesn't work, if you take the act of throwing a baseball and you try to literally analytically figure out and think the process through of throwing a baseball, you know, more often than not, you're going to th not throw it very well. Whereas if you, you shift the process to your subconscious and let it take control, you look at your target, um, your mind will calculate, a, you know, a thousand different calculations. Uh, and, and obviously a lot of this is based off repetition, but it, it really realistically feels the ball to the target. And that's the same thing that happens in shooting is that you, you feel the gun uh, to the clay target. Um, and, and that's a really important thing that you need to do is literally shut your mind off turn off all thought process and, and shift over to the subconscious and let it solve the problem for you. Now this is not to go and say that, that thinking your way partially through shooting is a bad thing. And, and I think a lot of people will get kind of wrapped around the axle and say, well, I can't think at all when it comes to shooting. I don't want to think. And, and to a certain degree, that's true. There's a point up to where you want to think. And then there's a point where you want to shut your mind completely off and, and let the subconscious take control of it. So let's go through kind of this, this step here um, and, and I'll kind of give you what I refer to as my pre-shot routine. Um, I'm a real firm believer in, in uh, you know, kind of self-coaching and being analytical about the shooting process up to a point um, and then you, you need to uh, really let the subconscious work. And I've kind of played around with this before, or I should say over the last year, and I found it, it really does work out well. My shooting has, has become much more consistent and, and much improved as a result of doing this. So the key thing is to, we talked before about shutting up the voice, the key thing is to, to give the voice in your mind something to do while you're shooting, because if you don't, it's gonna to try to take control it's going to start saying things that you don't want to uh, have it basically chattering in the background. You, you want to shut it up and keep it quiet. And one of the key ways of doing this is to give your, your, um, your left brain or your conscious thoughts something to do. And that's something to do is you tell your brain, hard focus, look hard at the target. And doing that will basically tie up the voice. It will tie up the conscious thought process that may be running along. And, and give it something constructive to do. Um, not only is it tied the voice up, uh, giving it something constructive to do, but it also gives you a huge benefit of looking hard at the target. And you hear this you know, numerous times, you know, hard focus on the target, look hard at the target, pick something out in the target. Uh, the harder you're looking at the target, the, the higher your, your odds are of actually being able to hit it. Uh, the added benefit is it shuts the voice up. So my pre-shot routine uh, really leverages off of, I would call it logic um, or analytical thought process. And then um, I switch over to basically a completely empty mind shooting standpoint. Pre-shot process for me goes something like this. When I step into a shooting station or shooting stand on the show pair, uh, usually after the, the show pair is thrown, I will look at the line of targets, where the break point or where I anticipate, anticipate the break point for each target being. And then I will go through this process. 
Um, based on line speed and distance, I will initially figure out what the lead is. Um, now, there's kind of a, a simple, uh, what I'll call a simple, um, basically three or a step number sequence here that I use for determining lead, and that is three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. For a crossing target, roughly going at about forty miles an hour at twenty yards, the distance is about three feet. Now, actually, it's about three and a half feet, but to make the, the sequence really easy, it's easy to remember three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. I use three. At 30 yards uh, for a crossing target, I use six. Now in reality, it's about six feet, seven inches, or roughly more around seven feet. But again, three, six, nine, 12, 15 is easy to remember. At 40 yards, um, the distance is, I use nine. Now in reality, it's about eight and a half or so, um, but I'll use nine, it's close enough. At 50 yards, the lead is about 12. Now in reality, it's about 11 or so, I use 12. And then finally at 60 yards, um, 15 feet. So I will step into a station. I will um, watch the show pair. I will estimate basically speed, angle, distance, everything, and come up with what I think is the correct lead. And at that point, I've got the lead firmly set in my mind, um, per already predefined of what I want to do. And then I look at the line of the bird at or where the break point is. And I figure roughly where the gun needs to be relative to the bird. So let's say it's an out or a crossing kind of crossing target left to right. Distance is let's say about 30 yards out. Average speed, um, 30 yard at a full crossing target would be uh, roughly six feet. But this is an angling target, so we don't need six feet. So let's say the bird's kind of dropping, and I might say, well, it's about three feet, and the position of the gun needs to be. If this is the bird, this is the gun. The gun needs to be roughly here. And I will create that visualization in my mind. Um, so I now visualize basically the, the bird going into the break point. I will visualize roughly the position of the gun relative to the bird. Um, and I'm all set at that point. And then the next thing I do is tell myself that I need to um, commit to the break point, uh, which is very key. Um, and at that point, I basically got everything that I need in terms of what I'm going to call my calculation uh, up front. So at that point, I now have an idea of where I want to break the bird. I have an idea of what the lead for the bird is. I have an idea of what my visualization for the bird is. I have everything basically I need at this point. When I step into the cage, uh, or the station to go shoot. I will remind myself again uh, where I'm going to break the bird, I have the visualization for that, and the lead. And I will do this. Oh, and now, what I, what I go through is I tell myself, I, I literally tell myself this sequence. I tell myself, look hard at the bird, um, uh, insert the gun, let's say X feet in front of the bird, uh, commit to the break point, stabilize, and break the shot. Now, you're going to start saying, well, wow, so you've been giving yourself a lot of instructions here. You're starting to sound somewhat, um, you know, mental, or, uh, so to speak, uh, in terms of what you just described. Actually, quite to the contrary. The first part, what I say, look hard at the bird. Okay, looking hard at the bird ties up my, my conscious mind, and, and we've already talked about that. But the next part of telling myself, you know, insert three feet or whatever in front of the bird, that's kind of a feel thing. When I tell myself, you know, three feet in front of the bird, insert three feet, that's a, a feel, feeling the gun get that distance front there. So again, that gets into right brain um, or subconscious thought process or a feel situation. Uh, commit to the break point. Again, this sort of sounds like a, a verbal instruction, but again, I know where the break point is. I know what the bird's going to look like going into the break point. I have a visualization of what that looks like. That's really, again, a, a visualization thing and something that the right brain works out very well. Um, the next point is stabilize the shot. And again, that sort of sounds like a, a you know verbal or, or word declaration, but stabilizing the shot is really matching the gun to the bird speed and, and having the gun in the right place. And again, that's a sight picture or an image um, that I accomplish. So, after I go and I tell myself those three steps of hard focus on the bird, get the gun in front of the bird, commit to the break point, stabilize the shot, at that point I will then mount the gun into my hold point, I will look into my look point, 
And at that point, I completely flush my mind of all conscious thought. I, I literally just like empty my mind. At that point, I'm completely, you know, mind free, so to speak, at this point. And I'm, I'm casually or gazing into um, my hold point with a really wide open vision. As the bird is thrown, then literally it, it's come out and do exactly what I told myself to do. Uh, the bird is thrown. I get a real hard focus on the bird. I can hopefully see the front leading edge or maybe even rings on the bird. Um, if, if my my thought process here or my my, um, my visual, visualization that I told myself works correctly, I'll automatically mount the gun in front of the bird. Uh, I know where the break point is. I will commit to it. As soon as the bird goes into that break point of the image that I've seen, um, I'll break the shot. And just prior to that, I'll stabilize the bird um, and, and know I'm in the right place. Now, if you miss the bird, the beauty of all of this is that because of the fact that you are aware of the bird barrel relationship, you'll know what that picture looked like uh, right when you missed. And you can make a correction of, uh, and, and this is the visualization correction, but a correction of where you want to place the, the gun relative to the bird. What you don't want to do is keep doing the same thing over and over again. Um, because if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're probably more than likely going to get the same result. The, the next problem though is that if you, if you miss the bird again and and you make, let's say, a minor correction, you miss it again, all of a sudden fear, usually, or panic is gonna start going through your mind. And you need to stop that. Um, it's, the, the, the problem there is that when you go through a situation like that and you start experiencing panic or fear, all of a sudden your, your mind will be tied up with this fear. Um, you'll lo completely lose your connection um, to your, your just call it natural ability to shoot or, or muscle movement, that will tighten up and basically everything goes downhill into a spiral very quick. So what you wanna do in a situation like that is to avoid the whole entire fear thing, is to go back and again, look at, mentally replay the image of, of look and see what you just saw and make some sort of a correction. That correction can even be just moving, it could be an experiment, but don't get too you know, wrapped up or tied to breaking the bird. Um, because all of a sudden when you tie breaking the bird into uh, making the shot, that kind of puts a whole entire another, um, I would say, a, a pressure situation on you. So what you want to really do in that situation is that when you miss, you want to use it kind of as a learning experience. Every time you take a shot, that shot gets banked uh, into, a, into your memory. So if you are making shots and they're on target and they're hitting, um, when you go into a station and, you're, and you've done everything right and you're shooting and you're breaking birds, you just basically want to keep repeating that same image over and over again. When you miss, again, that shot is being banked. Uh, what you did, the miss is being banked and you can use that information constructively to go back and make a correction the next time you run into that, uh, that shooting situation or for the next pair there at that shooting situation. So hopefully all of this has given you some idea about how to tame the voice and what to do. Uh, again, you wanna tie the voice up. You wanna give it something to do uh, when you're shooting. And what I found the easiest thing to do is basically to tell yourself hard focus on the bird. Um, you want to make use of your logic and reasoning and your ability to break down the shot up until a point. Um, I really believe that it becomes uh, or makes you a much more consistent and better shooter in the long run. At least I've found for myself that it's, that has definitely been the case. Um, but when it comes to breaking that bird, you want to completely shut your mind off. You want to shift over to your subconscious. You want the right brain to take control of it. You want to feel the gun to the bird. You want to use, use visualization and basically just keep breaking them over and over and over. So until then, thanks for tuning in and uh, break them all.